Hi folks, it's Dan Lanny here from fstopacademy.com with another short tutorial on my journey into color grading and hopefully one that you can follow along as well. We're using DaVinci Resolve Lite and Tangent Element Control Surface. Now, in the last video, we talked a bit about this control surface. Um, let me just go into a bit more detail about this. So as I mentioned before, these panels are elements, so they're actually components that you can use part or all of. Now, the panel that I'm finding the most useful at the minute is this panel here, which of course is the tracker ball panel. But the second really useful panel is the multifunction panel. And these actually just join together. There's little pins and they are magnetic. So if I just do that, and then you get this whole system. So if you were only gonna buy two elements, I have found in the short time I've been using Resolve that these two really do work extremely well together. Then you've got the um, other two panels, which are the, the knobs and the buttons. And I have to say, they are extremely useful as well. Um, as I'm learning, I'm sort of discovering how I like to work. There are certain things I do in Resolve which I, I prefer to use the mouse with. Um, and then I'm probably a little bit slower learning some of these functions, but it become, I can see how it can become so quick working from a panel. So in the last video, we pulled in a ProRes file and we segmented the clips and we're now in a position where that media is sitting here and we can see rather than dealing with one long uh, quick time movie, it splits it up into the individual shots. Now, I, I don't do work that involves getting EDLs and the likes. I mostly do corporate projects. I tend to be quite high end corporates, but I tend to work um, on Final Cut 10 and then just bring stuff into normally other color grading softwares. But now that Resolve 9 is out, I'm finding myself becoming really interested in, in using it. And in the last three or so weeks, I've been using it. I've been really excited about its potential. So let's just look here now. We're in the media area of the software. Uh, if we can go to the conform window, obviously I can drag the mouse and control everything on the screen using my mouse. But one of the key advantages of using a control surface is that, um, particularly this one here, which is the multifunction control surface, I've actually got all my play controls at my fingertips. So I can stop, I can, I can go backwards, I can stop, I can, I can go to the next clip. And what I find really useful is I can just click, you know, clip by clip and work very quickly rather than, you know, moving the cursor along or using keyboard shortcuts. So that's the first thing that I find is very useful. And then you can obviously use the trackball to um, you know, trim, I guess, and go frame by frame and, and move your, your shot along to a point where you wanna do some color grading. So that's very, very useful. The other big difference is if we take this here, for example, and just do a primary correction, um, we've got our scopes up. And let's say we wanted to just m manually bring down the black levels. Now in the previous video, we just used the manual controls here to pull our black levels down, which you know works perfectly fine. However, isn't it easier to just do that? And, and suddenly you're watching your grading monitor and instead of having to kind of worry about clicking a mouse, you're able to just feel it. And that's the thing that I find just so empowering about working with a control surface. So I can bring my blacks down, and if I wanted to just adjust, you'll notice here, you know, the red and green channel are peaking a bit more than the blue channel. So if I wanted to just adjust that and move the blue channel towards um, a more neutral frame, then I, I can just use the trackball. And so rather than trying to manually move it around to adjust my, my, my color saturation and my, my look, I can just use the trackball and balance the scene that way. And if I go, there's two ways to look at before and after. I can either click on the number and it'll bring in a, a hatched red cross and that's before and after. Or I can use my multifunction control here and there are two levels, there are A and B level. So on menu B, I've got enable, disable all. 
And so suddenly you've got this ability to just use a button so I can color correct. Uh, I can bring that, crush it down. I can bring my mid-tones up. I could look at my whites and push them up a little bit higher. And then if I want to look at before and after, it's just a simple click of a button. And to me, that just, the mouse gives you certain amounts of control. You can control everything with the mouse, but you can only do one thing at a time. Whereas this way, if I wanted to be pushing my, let's say I wanted to push the highlights towards yellow, uh, enable that, my highlights towards yellow, I, I can do that very quickly just by adjusting the trackball wheel. Uh, if I wanted to sho shove my shadows towards blue, wow, already, look at that difference. I've had a very creative experience. I've been able to give it a look simply by adjusting these buttons here. Um, and if I wanted to just go back to my base level, I press this button here, uh, so the, the one here with the, with the dot on it, and that can you know just adjust the color back to zero. And then similarly, um, the outer wheel controls this here. So it's, it's non-destructive for a start. Um, and it's just really quick to work. So let me just take you through, um, I'm gonna do a primary cor correction across all of these um, shots to just demonstrate how quick this can be. So I'm really at this stage only using the trackball aspect and the multifunction wheel. And these are the two you're gonna find very useful. So let's just get rid of this um, node here. So, um, I've got my scopes up and all I'm going to do at this pass is just simply go through the um, basic correction. So the first level of correction on each. So it's just looking at luminance and any color shift. So I'm going to use primary, my primary parade here and my vector scope. Um, if you're not familiar with these tools, your parade is your RGB channels. Um, built into a waveform monitor. So what you wanna be doing is, if you want complete black with no detail, you'd be setting your shadow detail right down at zero. And, and obviously if you go below zero, you start to get just a complete crushing of the blacks and no information in that area. Whereas if you pull that all up, now I'm using a, a, a very you know nice TV Logic 24 inch grade one monitor here. So what I'm seeing is, is pretty accurate, but I'm also using my parade, my scopes, because that's giving me a very accurate scientific measurement. And if I pull them down to here, um, I'm pulling the blacks down to a point there where I'm actually getting, you'll see on, on the red channel there, the red's just going into clip but there isn't actually any red in the frame, so I'm not too worried. So I can pull that down further till about here and not lose any of the critical information in the frame. So by just doing that there, I've got my peak white sitting at 1023 and my black sitting at zero, and that's gonna suit me fine just for that first initial pass. Um, my vector scope is looking at my red red, green, and blue color channels with my yellow, magenta, and cyan here. And what it's saying is, is there's, a, a, sh there's a, a, a tendency in this image here to be shifting towards blue and cyan, which makes sense because it's got, there's a lot of blue and green in the image and that's what it's giving us. But I'm gonna leave it as that at the moment. Now to go to the next frame, the next piece of video, I simply press this here. And our next shot here is giving us, you know, this helicopter shot here. So if I wanted to bring the blacks down, probably do to about there. I, I wouldn't want my blacks to go right down to zero in this frame, but I might want to lift my peak white level just to the point where I've got really nice bright whites in the clouds. So again, next frame, uh, again, that's fine. Next frame, I might push my uh, luminous, just doing an auto save that I might push my whites up just to make the the whites pump out a little bit more you can see that there by just lifting the whites up to 100 percent i've still got the detail in the clouds but it's um it's just making me you know 
ping out a little bit more. And again, just see how quickly using this panel is making my life instead of having to click on each frame. And I think what's important here is, and the reason this is such a nice tool to work with, is I'm just thinking about the creative. I'm not getting too bogged down in the software. I'm just looking at my parade there. I'm saying, yeah, I'll push that up a little bit. I might bring the blacks down just to about here. Look at my before and after. Um, this was all shot on the FS100 and I've got quite a flat look. I use the cine tone gammas. I keep the color saturation down. Um, it's not really a log function, but it gives me a nice flattish image to work with. Then I can just pull that um, contrast back in at this stage. So that's nice, liking that. Next one, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll probably just bring that down to about there and maybe pull my shadows down a little bit um, before and after, tiny adjustments. But um, the panel allows me to just race through this. So next shot here, and I wanna do this in real time for you just to show you how quick it actually is. Um, not a lot of black in that scene. So if we pulled that down, it'll add a bit of contrast, push up the whiter areas, make that jump out a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Um, nice dramatic scene here. Push the whites up, push the blacks down. Uh, you see how I'm doing my highlights and my shadows at the same time using the panel. And just advance it to the next frame, push this up here. There's not really any black in that scene, so I'll probably just pull that down to there. Same with this, up a little bit there, down a fraction. Um, and this, this first level of correction is just really to make sure, as, as the name suggests, that, that everything is correct. Uh, I'm not worrying too much about the overall look at this stage. I'm just gonna do a first pass of correction. Um, bring that down to here. So what I now I'm doing is that my blacks are black in the frame, my whites are white, and everything else is sitting in the middle. Um, moving along to this shot here, um, push that up to there, maybe pull that down to here, and move along to the next frame. Uh, that doesn't need a lot doing to it, but it's just keeping it you know, in a nice area, if you like. So I know that my blacks are blacks and my whites are whites. Um, this one here, it's all been fairly well exposed. I mean, I'm pretty anal about my exposure. When I'm on location, I use my histogram religiously. And if I've got a monitor with a waveform, then I use the waveform. Because what I'm seeing on location then is a waveform not dissimilar to this. So I know that I'm keeping things in that, that, that range. And it's all about protecting those highlights. And if I protect the highlights on location, then my job here is made much, much easier. So it speeds up the process. So do that there, and there we go. So there, I've, I've, I've done a first level of correction across the whole project, and that's taken me no more than a couple of minutes. So um, that's the first level of correction. In the next um, video, we'll start looking at maybe giving this a bit of a look and showing you some of the other features in DaVinci Resolve and how this panel really does help you achieve those looks very, very quickly indeed. So thanks for watching and um, please check out the other videos.